Are you getting ready to take the Praxis Elementary Science exam? That is test code 5005, and it's a subtest of Praxis 5001 Elementary Education. If that is a test that you need to pass, then good news. My name is Bob, and I'm a test prep expert with study.com, and I'm going to help you and walk you through everything that you need to know in this video. We're going to cover everything that is on the test, how best to prepare, and my top five strategy tips so that you are ready for test day. All right, let's jump in. Let's keep it simple. The Praxis 5005 constitutes one of four separate parts that together form the Praxis 5001 elementary education test. When you sign up, you have the choice to take only Praxis 5005 or all four parts of Praxis 5001 simultaneously. Your decision. It's entirely up to you, but let's quickly run through the advantages and disadvantages of taking all four sections together. Advantage. It's a big money saver. Registering for all sections collectively costs $180, whereas a single test costs $64. If you register for each test one by one, you'll end up paying a total of $256. Advantage. You can complete it all in one fell swoop. Disadvantage. You are required to prepare for four tests simultaneously. You may find it less overwhelming to concentrate on one test at a time. So how long is the test and how is it scored? Praxis 5005 is 60 minutes long and includes about 55 multiple choice questions. This gives you a bit over one minute per question. So strategy tip number one, aim for 45 to 50 seconds per question so you have cushion for harder questions. And strategy tip number two, skip questions if they are taking a long time. You can always come back to them later if you have time at the end, but you don't want to eat up all your time on a hard question early. You'll have access to an on-screen scientific calculator during the test. You have to use the calculator provided and can't bring your own. Strategy tip number three, practicing with the calculator is just as important as reviewing material and doing practice questions. You can practice using the calculator on the ETS website or check our channel for a video tutorial on the calculator. The next thing to consider is your test location. Praxis tests are all online tests, which means you'll be sitting in front of a computer instead of filling in bubbles with a pencil. Most people in the US and Canada can take the test from home, although in-person testing centers are also an option. We've made a comprehensive video on the advantages and disadvantages of each method, which I'll link here. A key factor for many people is whether there's a testing center nearby. So I strongly recommend visiting the ETS website here to locate your closest center if you haven't already done so. So we've covered the basics. Now let's dive into some test specifics and what to expect from the individual questions themselves. The questions themselves are 100% multiple choices, which Praxis calls selected response. On Praxis 5005, there are three main content categories that you need to be comfortable with. There are about 17 to 19 questions in each category. The categories are earth science, life science, physical science, but what exactly is covered on the test? Let's dig into each content category a little bit more. Earth science includes topics in geology, astronomy, paleontology, and atmospheric science. This section also includes questions about the scientific method, scientific processes, and scientific inquiry. Here's a typical problem that you might see. The term ring of fire in earth science refers to which of the following? A, the region of the earth with the most frequent thunderstorms. B, the area with the highest concentration of active volcanoes and earthquakes. C, the part of the earth that receives the most sunlight. D, the location of the earth's large desert. Strategy tip number four, it's okay to guess. In fact, guessing is better than leaving an answer blank. If you don't remember what the ring of fire is, eliminate anything you know for sure is wrong and take a guess. Worst case scenario, you get it wrong. Best case, an extra correct answer. The life science category covers topics like genetics and heredity, life cycles, cells, and ecosystems. Questions also cover health topics like nutrition and communicable diseases. Here's a typical problem you might see. Which of the following is an example of a closed ecosystem? A, tundra, B, terrarium, C, forest, or D, pond? 
The physical science category covers topics in physics and chemistry, including properties of matter, forms of energy, and types of motion. Here's a typical problem you might see. If a coin and two balls of different weights are dropped simultaneously from a height of 10 meters in a vacuum, which of the following will be true? A, the heavier ball will hit the ground first. B, the coin will hit the ground first. C, the lighter ball will hit the ground first. And D, the coin and the two balls will all hit the ground at the same time. All of the categories also include questions about scientific inquiry, lab equipment, and science as a career. The Praxis 5005 only contains science topics that you learn throughout your K-12 through education. So it's easy, right? Not necessarily. Although you've probably learned all the material, you may have forgotten a lot of the details. I've certainly forgotten what a terrarium is. So what's the best way to prepare? A great way to figure out how to focus your study time is by starting with a full-length practice test. Study.com's test prep course offers multiple so that you can identify where you need to spend the most study time. Don't worry about your score the first time around. You were just trying to figure out where you need to focus. Study.com will generate a study plan with top priorities for you. If you use other test prep materials, you may need to analyze your practice results manually. Watch lessons to review the topics in your study plan and do practice problems or make flashcards to transfer the material to your long-term memory. And that brings me to strategy tip number five. Practice, practice, practice. There is no substitute for working through sample questions that mirror those you will face on test day. Every practice question that you do is going to help you be a little more prepared for test day. Every practice question you do might be a question that you see on an actual test or the same type of question. So the more comfortable you are there, the better that test is going to go. When you see that question on the test, you'll think, oh yeah, I just did something like this. That is going to help you a ton. You can prep in a number of different ways. I'm going to recommend study.com's Praxis 5005 Science Test Prep course. It covers everything that I just went through, but in a ton more detail, including short form videos that explain all the concepts you are going to encounter on the test, along with a huge bank of high quality practice questions, complete with answer explanations, so you can learn from your mistakes. All the content has been written and vetted by former teachers and users who complete the course have a 92% pass rate on the test. So yeah, a great resource for you. Also, please check out more videos in these series. I'm going to be posting some Praxis 5005 question walkthroughs here shortly so that we can tackle some specific questions together. So if you found this video helpful, please like, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get alerted when new teacher test prep content drops. And also, I wanna hear from you. Let me know down below in the comments if there are specific tests or questions that you are struggling with that we should cover here. And don't forget to circle back once you have passed your Praxis 5005 test so that we can all celebrate with you. Take care.